TV. Yeah. Oh, dude, you got a serious voice. Yeah, I do. Come, yo, Nitty, come here a second. Today is today is Nitty's birthday. Do I have to sing? Can you sing Happy Birthday to her? Wait, hang on. You gotta come out here. Can I just say it? No, you gotta sing it. Why? You have a nice voice. You said right. I'm not good at singing though. Like I'm, it's like tone deaf. Oh, you are tone deaf? Probably. I don't know. No, no, no. Do you? No, you. Have, oh, you have a nice voice, but yeah, not to but sing. Not to sing. Dude, well, hang I on. Just, Hold the mic close. People just always ask me to say like quotes and stuff. All right. To try, try to sing it, man. This is awesome. I promise you, it will be the worst thing. No, you've no, ever no. Heard. This is good. Though. Wait, do you want, do you want him to sing it? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. Dude, you have the most awesome voice in class. No, it's not going to be the worst thing. It's going to be the best. No, thing. Well, it will no, it's not good. Be. Yeah, you got this, man. You okay. know, you, yeah, you got this, girl. Hang on, hang on. Reeves going to do can this. We, can we have the whole class do it though, so I'm not the only one? Nah, it's all you, my friend. No, you got this. Hang on. You got it. Dude. I regret raising my hand. No, no, dude, I'll, hang on, I'm, I got you, right? <laughs> You're good. You have an awesome voice. Thank you. Can you do it? Sure. All right, go I'll for try. it. I'll try. Happy birthday to you. Good, you got it. Happy got it. birthday to you. What's your name? I got it. Nitty. Birthday, dear Nitty. Happy birthday to you. Awesome, dude. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Dude, Reeves, that was the best, yeah, by the way. Uh, <laughs> hey, on a, on a, uh, <laughs> dude, that was awesome. Um, Bruce, seriously, that took a lot. That took a lot. I forced you into that, and but you did it. All right. So, um, I want to, let's see, the class today, I'm calling it not, not looking back. Um, it could be not looking backward, but, you know, sometimes you just got to kind of have a little bit of fun. Uh, and wait, introduce yourselves first off. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Fahad Al-Husseini from the United Arab Emirates. I major at cybersecurity. What's up, everybody? I'm Hamza. I'm from Jersey, but yeah, that's about it. <laughs> from Jersey. <laughs> Dude, no one's just from Jersey, right? North Jersey, South Jersey? North Jersey. North Jersey. And, uh, and, but, and where's your family from? From Pakistan. From Pakistan. Okay, so you're both Muslim, right? You're like kind of Muslim. I'm Muslim. Dep depending on whether your parents or grandparents are watching or? Yeah. All right. Dude. <laughs> Grandparents, it's this guy's. I, he, I, we, he's always praying in the back room and stuff. So, dude, seriously, Muslim. Hey, um, <laughs> hey, I, I wanna. So, I wanna just say a couple things, and I wanna you I, you can respond to it. Basically, your what I, what I would like for you is to um, for the first the class is broken into three parts. Um, so. You're gonna, you'll be here for the first part, we have someone else for the second part, and then the third part's gonna be a, a, a big participation thing. So um, the other day, I, you know, we, in, in speaking with um, the, the uh, three, four women who were up here, I, I made a comment that I, you know, I'm not really comfortable with because it doesn't, because you might take it the wrong way. And so, um, it was the comment where I, I was talking about, we were talking about traditional dress and kind of traditional clothing, and I was comparing it to, you know, what we see here at Penn State. And um, by the way, I'm just going to talk for a few minutes, and then you guys, so you're, you guys are just hanging out here for a sec, all right? Um, and I was mentioning uh, clothing styles here at Penn State, in particular among women, and I made that comment about... Uh, yeah, just how I'm, like, really, when I walk down the streets at night, like, I'm just really kind of like, like this, uh, and just really kind of careful about it, you know, and I, and I think I miss, I, I don't, I don't want to mischaracterize that, because I, I think it's really important that you, you have an understanding of where I'm coming from on, on this. Um, first off, uh, I'm, I'm more progressive than, in these matters, I'm really progressive. Uh, the last thing women need 
is for more men to be telling you how to, what to do with your bodies and how to dress and one thing after another. Like that's, there's far too many men today who seem to think that it's their job to do that. And, and so my fear was that my comments kind of came out of that from that place and I don't want them to come out of that place because the, the point is, you all, for women, you, you, you make a decision about your bodies and how, whatever you want to do, um, I'm, I'm, you can be pretty certain I'm more progressive or further looking f- further forward than, than you could ever be or you that you are currently. And so, um, for me, I think the, that where I, where I get, where I, where I, I get to this place um, as a sociologist whereby, um, you know, people do whatever, can, can do and should do whatever they want to do in terms of, how, you know, how people dress and how people present themselves and so on. It doesn't, nothing bothers me at all. And I've traveled to enough places in the world and had enough experiences of people and living differently than me, that I'm cool with it. It doesn't, not, it doesn't really matter. I've been on nudist beaches, and uh, it's like, it's, it's awesome, man. You know, I think that we have um, gotten to this place, however, where we, where we get lost in the sociology of life. And um, in, in my concern always as a teacher is that uh, a lot of us are, following what's happening around us with the idea that we're making our own decisions and we're our own principled decisions and in fact we're just kind of following what other people around us are doing and on, and I think that's a, a message of mine that comes out you know in this class uh, should come out in this class a lot that um, we're not nearly as free as many of us would like to believe so if you're you know, if you think you're freely choosing to live in X or Y way and everybody around you is living in the same way, then you're not freely choosing it. And it's kind of like if your God hates all the same people who you hate, then your God is probably made up in your mind. It's not a real God. So um, I think that I think that matters. And I think that a lot of times... Uh, you know, we live in a world where it, this has not always been true, um, but it certainly is true in the in the modern age, uh, where it is still a world that is shaped by and empowered uh, by uh, by men more so than women. And if you have the idea that that's not the case, that things are have equaled out and so on, well, I would just kind of suggest that you do kind of a deep dive into a lot of things. Um, but uh, there, there's so many places where we just find ways to strip power away from women. And, uh, and sometimes they're really kind of odd. And so like, for example, if I ask, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do it, but I could do it. I could ask, Oh, a woman in here. Hey, when is um, when's the last time you had a pimple? And okay, and w- what'd you do with that pimple? Like how how long did you have it? And was it painful? And you know, did you pot? Was it pus? Like what? what you know, did, did you pay attention to it? Did it bother you? Was it like you know? Tell me about it, right? And it wouldn't be a really big thing because it's kind of a pimple. If I said, you know, did you have an ingrown hair? Did you have, like, where was it? It was on my leg. Oh, well, really? Well, how was that? Like, did, was it painful? What did you do about it? How long did you have it? You know, an ingrown hair is a natural thing. Yeah, I had one on my chin. I had one on my leg. I had one on my arm. It's natural. Everybody gets ingrown hairs. Every human being does. And, um, well, every woman bleeds. So if I ask a you when's the last time you bled 
Not every woman bleeds because some women don't bleed, but you start at a certain age and then you end at a certain age. And not everybody does, but most people do. Well, when did you start and when did you end? And when's the last time you bled? And how long was it? And did, did you, was it painful? Was it like, okay, and bleed. You know, okay, you have your menses, your period, whatever it is, right? My wife says bleeding, so, because he's like, I'm not going to deny that there's a lot of blood involved in this, so this is it. And so, well, how was that for you? Like, let's talk about it. Well, you know, a lot of women would, in here, including, would be really reluctant to talk about that. You could talk about the ingrown hair. You could talk about the pimple. But to talk about bleeding would be like, ah, I'm not sure if I'm comfortable talking about that. Well, hang on. But they're all natural. Bleeding for a woman is as natural as an ingrown hair on your arm or a pimple on your chin. So, like, what's, where's the discomfort come from? Because if this was a world that was created by women and women were in power from the very beginning, trust me that people, there, no woman would have a problem talking about bleeding, about their period, about their menses. No, nobody would because it would just be like, this is it. And if men came along and said like, oh, you know, I'm uncomfortable talking about that. Well, you wouldn't. Men would be shunned. Because, like, listen, this is natural. This is who we are. This is what it is. And so the norm would be bleeding once a month. But, in fact, what happens is we take something like that that, that that happens with women, and then it becomes this other thing. So if I just take any one woman in here and I just start asking you that question, you know, I, I give you the microphone and say, like, hey, can you just tell me about your bleeding? Like, it would be, some of you would be like, okay, that's really cool. How many women in here would just be like, oh, yeah, I'll talk about it, whatever. That's not even, that's not even close to half. But if I asked you, hey, talk about the ingrown hair on your arm, how many would say like, oh, man, I'm really embarrassed by it. I don't want to talk about that. That's a personal thing. I don't talk about that with anybody. It's like, you know, all the things. And so this is the way I think as a sociologist constantly is, and I'm, and, and I'm, and I'm constantly trying to understand my own place in the world and my own way of thinking. And where do I get my ideas from? And why do I have these ideas? And, you know, are they progressive ideas? Are they backward ideas? And where did I, where, where, where are they from? And how, mu how many of them are, come from the fact that I'm an American? Like, just having this conversation is, is very much the fact that I'm an American, right? This would not happen in, in the Emirates. And this would not happen in Pakistan. But here, it's happening here because this is the U.S. And I can talk about this. And I'm a sociologist. And it's what I do. And so my take is always that we question ourselves and try to question, like, where our assumptions come from? Where our thoughts come from? Where do our feelings come from? And, and what does that mean, right? When, we, when we're really trying to think that we're uh, you know, really autonomous and thoughtful beings, you know? You know what I mean? All right, so, gentlemen, uh, Hey, hang on. I, I just want to say something. Because I just had one of these, like, where my, my, my crown chakra just, like, opened. And, and, and I just saw, had a moment where I saw truth. And I was thinking, like, how the other day when I said, why don't, you refer, why don't we refer to God as a woman? People are so comfortable talking about mankind and God's a he and he this and he that and he thinks and he feels and he this and he that, right? But not a she. Would you, could you imagine referring, just from here on out, referring to God as a she? Uh, of course not. Whatever you say to me, I will not believe it. What, what's that? that God again? is a he. It's God's written he. in the Quran. It's, okay. So I will not. Because it says that in the Quran. And who, and did women write the Quran? The, the Quran is actually the words of God. Okay. And you and so that's your belief, right? I mean, you believe that, right? Because you were, you were born to believe that, right? Correct. I mean, you were socialized to believe that. You were born with no beliefs. Had you been, had you been born and became, and, and you and my wife and I adopted you from Abu Dhabi, right? Were you, you were born in Abu Dhabi? Yes, I was. Okay, and my wife and I adopted you from Abu Dhabi. 
and then you were our child. And I said, hey, man, God's a she. He'd be like, yeah, all right. Well, first off, you wouldn't be Muslim, right? You want to talk about uh, what uh, the Quran raises me to? I can give you. No, no, no. No, I, we don't need to do that. But I just want to ask you, like, how do you in your mind have an understanding of the idea that had we adopted you, you'd of be. Of course, I would believe whatever my parents would say to me. Mm -hmm. So everyone is raised. But uh, I then get shaped to what's uh, in my surroundings. Okay. So you get shaped to your surroundings. But, so, but the issue is, so what you said, wait, hang on a sec. So what you said is, hey, wait, but God is a he, right? But if you're telling me that, yeah, but you could have been born over here, in a slightly different situation, and you'd think differently. So, like, how do you manage that in your mind, like that truth? Like, how do you manage that truth? Because it's a truth with a small t. It's not a capital T. I didn't understand. So it's a truth that's a relative truth, right? Because, like, you believe it to be true because you've decided that you believe it. That to be God true. is a he? Yeah, God, let's say God is a he, yeah. Okay. So you've decided that that's true. Yes, through evidence. But, it, but it's not true. To you, it's not true. No, no, hang on. But if you had been born, even to you, like it is for you now, like you okay. right here, Fahad, okay. in this embodiment of okay. you, right? Okay. But had you been born differently, right? Had you been adopted by my wife and I, God forbid, oh, <laughs> Jesus, I, you poor soul, right? But had you been, you wouldn't say that. And so then... Yes, so, I agree. Okay, so then I, how, do you, how do you hold that, that, that relative truth? You, you have to do your research. You have to visit around, you have to learn, you have to ask questions. Yeah, okay. Have you ever studied Buddhism? For example, you have this misbah, what's this? Yeah. Are you a Muslim? I am a Muslim, actually. You did your research? I, no, 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 I didn't, actually. I accidentally converted to Islam. Accidentally? Yeah, it was an accident. <laughs> Yeah, no, it really was. I didn't, I didn't realize in the moment I was converting. But then once I did, I was like, ah, oh, what the hell? All right, but, I'll be But uh, last class you said you were Jewish. No, I wanted to be Jewish. You wanted to the be. The problem is Jews won't really accept. You know, Judaism is like a thing that, you, man, you got to be born. You can convert, but it's not the same, man. You got to be like, it's a whole life yes. ancestry experience. Yes, correct. But, but when I converted to Islam, I was all in, man. I'm like, all right, cool, man. I'll be Muslim. Like, why not? Uh, but then the guy that converted me, he was, he was a, a Sufi. He said, okay, well, you can't believe in evolution. And I'm like, eh, okay, we're going to have a little bit of a problem here. Um, but I, I'm still hanging on to it because, like, well, whatever. I like, I like the beads and I like praying and whatever. But I'm really an atheist. So, But I can be Jewish and be an atheist. <laughs> Dude, how about you? What did you think about last class? Anyway, I hear you, and we're going to come back to you, okay? I mean, I agree with him. I mean, I'm Muslim, and that's how I was brought up, too. So, like, you know, I, I actually went to a Muslim school for, like, 10 years. And, you know, that's what they taught us. That's what I was born into, and, you know, that's what, kind of what I believe. And I, I wouldn't call God a she because, you know. Why not? Because through the evidence and everything, he was a he. But God is not a he, listen, no, here's the evidence. He's not a right? he, but it's he. Like, you okay, here, said? listen, man. Okay. But you, but you do understand the implications of yeah. that, right? So you take half the world's pop. So women, right here. So just for, 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 a, for a minute, gentlemen, here's what I want to do. Imagine you're a woman, okay? Right? And God is n not like you, a he. God, or, or God is a woman, and everybody talks about God as a woman, like she, and she loves us, and she, it, you know, expresses herself in this way, and, and she gave these ideas to Muhammad, or she, you know, gave, helped to give birth to her son on earth, who was Jesus of Nazareth, or she worked with Noah to save the earth from the floods, or whatever it would be, right? And that everything was she, she, she. Would, do you think, would you be connected to God in the same way, do you think? Like, I mean, just a thought. Like, how would that be for you? I mean, if that was, like, the norm, then I probably would. But, I mean, if you were to tell me that God's a she, I'd probably just look at you in despair and be like, nah. Like, 
-hmm. No, but no. if 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 she was a god, yeah. it would feel like, uh, and I'm a woman, I would feel like I'm the superior gender, that I have the more power, but it's not like this. Okay, okay, hang on. If you were a woman and God was a she, you'd feel like you were the superior gender. Yeah, uh, Kind of course. like men do. Right? Yeah, men feel. Yeah, they get the power, do. they are more uh, into the war, they are, they are fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, th th listen. And yeah. then men are deciding what, what women should wear. Women are, women are deciding. Wait, hang on, hang on a second. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, hang on, bro. Hang on. Hang on. Hang, bro, with your hand raised. Hang on a second. All right. Men are deciding what women should wear. Men are deciding how men should act. Men are deciding what it is for both genders. So the, the question is, huh? So it's interesting that if we imagine that if, if we created God as a woman, okay? See, I'm a sociologist, right? So just, I'm, just you need to hold tight on one thing. This is really important, right? I am a sociologist. So one of the, there, one of the, there are a couple things about sociology that are really, really important. And if you don't believe them, you can't be a sociologist. So one is that our, our behavior, our actions, are shaped by factors and forces outside of our control. That's just a given. So we might have a free will, but these outside factors and forces, just like the way you were socialized, shapes us, right? And the way I was socialized shapes me. So the other thing is, it's nearly impossible for me to imagine that human beings didn't create their gods or didn't hear their gods speaking to them from within the context of their own lives, right? That's just, this is just a thing about, so this is how we are as sociologists. So then when I think about, okay, women being, huh, if women, if God was, if we saw God as a woman and women would feel that they're the superior beings, right? Okay, just like men do. So that leads me then as a sociologist to say like, oh, that's even more evidence for me to say like, hey, men are like, Yo, what's going on, men? Like, what's happening? Like, how do you, like, how are we managing this? And so I can't get past that. How did you, how'd you feel, like, with women talking about wearing hijabs? How is that for you guys? I mean, my family, I don't think anybody wears hijab. Yeah. Um, and they grew up in, like, like, they came here when they were very little, like, one or two. Yeah. And the idea of wearing a hijab was never part of, like, their lives. And but I mean, like, I don't have an issue with it, you know. Everybody. So you're cool with it? Yeah, I don't, I don't care. Fahad, how about you, man? Uh, I actually liked what all the girls said about the hijab. Even the the girl that was not already a hijabi, she she uh, asks God for uh, guidance towards the hijab. Yeah. So that was beautiful. She knows what's right, what's wrong, what she has to do, what she hasn't to do. But listen, but God, being the male that he is he may not ever speak to her in which case she might just get to my age and be like ah, i still haven't heard from god so i still don't have a job that would be okay for you to me f let's say me if i want wanted to choose a wife i would choose a hijabi girl yeah, not okay. not uh, not hijabi girl but it would be okay for her like she's she she, she wants uh, not she doesn't want to wear the hijab it's it's not her choice yeah 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 but but it's, no uh, it's god it's her choice with god yes but is it, is it actually, she, must she do it? She must do it. It's not if she likes it or not, she must do it. Well, but this is because of the West, Western world, they are uh, sending messages, uh, freedom of women, rights. They're already, they already have many rights. Yeah. They're already powerful. They, they are the best creatures in the world. All right, but on. they don't realize that. All right, okay. All right, hang on. You do realize you're speaking to a Western audience. Yeah, I know. I'm I speaking know. to. Yo, hang on, hang on, hang on a second. Yo, hang on. Yo. Yo. Dude, I. Yo, hang on. Listen up. What's really this is no this is really really important. Because th this is th the value of hearing what Fahad is saying is you're getting a perspective from that is a very common perspective in another culture, okay? 
And so what's really important is that my perspective and his perspective or Hamza's perspective or whoever it is, Nidhi, it, it's all, these are all different perspectives and we bring them together. So you right now have the opportunity to hear what, this, what, what is a very common perspective from Muslims, especially Muslim men in the Middle East, but not everybody, okay? You see that? So it's like, yo, man, walk, walk into that. You should be saying, like, whoa, this is awesome. That's what you should be saying, because that's the point of the class. So, bro, so the idea for, so you're demonstrating what you just said right there. It's like the idea is that women are seen and this is a Christian idea also from very conservative Christians and, and Jews as well. Even, even people that, you know, would force women to be covered from head to toe is that women are the superior being, right? That's what you said, right? So we're, we're, and like, what does that mean? Like, how do you then, how do you, as a Muslim guy, like, how do you, what's that mean for you? Like, that women are the superior being. Like, what do you mean? Like, say more about that. For, ex- for example, uh, I didn't get the question. What's that? I didn't get the question. What, no, what's like, the question? When you say, like, women are the superior being, right? Okay. What's that, what's that mean for you? It means that I have to look after them before I look after myself. Okay, which is very common, actually. You know, you realize, by the way, the Quran. So, th- th- and, th- and I got this. So I have a friend, an Afghan friend, who was... Uh, he's, he's a lawyer, he's a very, he's, uh, was pretty high, kind of a high-ranking lawyer in Afghanistan, and he was involved in writing Sharia law in Afghanistan, okay? And, you, you know, you have codified law, and then you have Sharia law, and Sharia law is you got to take the Quran, and you have to decide how is the Quran actually going to be a code of conduct for us. It's one thing just to say it, but it's like if you were going to implement the Ten Commandments, like, how are you going to implement the Ten Commandments? You know what I mean? How are you going to do that? Like, what's that mean? So, how do you do that? So, my friend, and as he walked me through the Quran, I'm like, damn, the Quran has so, is, there, it's, has so many, it's so progressive for women, actually. And that there's a way in which, as we were walking through, sort of U.S. law on the divorce and child care and one thing after another, and, I, and he's walking me through with the Quran, the interpretation of the Quran. I'm like, the Quran is far more progressive. Not far more, but it's more progressive. I'm like, damn, man. So, so that's the thing that you don't, if you're not in that, you don't really see it, right? But that's him, and he thinks differently than, obviously, most of the Taliban. Okay, so the idea is women, um, so you look, you, you at, so there's a kind of a protection side. But you know in the West, like, we don't see that, right? Like, if you yeah, say no. there's a protection side, like, I can't see it. Yeah, like, women are like, dude, I'll protect myself, right? But how about Muslim women? Like, what's your experience with Muslim women in, back in the Emirates? Like, how many women do you encounter? Are like, dude, you don't need to protect me, man. I got this. I don't know. I come from a basically a very safe society, very safe country. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I don't know much of that. Yeah, that's not part of the Emirates. Bro, how about you, man? What's your, like, what's your take on that when you heard him just say that? Like, what's I mean, like, I've read the Quran, like, you know, you know, cover to cover. And, you know, it, they talk a lot about, like, women being the top. You know, you know you're never supposed to look at a woman twice. Um, yeah. Like, you know, they say lower your gaze, you know, protect the woman, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and they, they kind of say, you know, like, protect the woman. And, but, I mean, that's really it, really. That's but I listen, but, okay, so men are being taught... You, you don't to you respect and, really you respect know, yeah. right how, what do you how is it here have you guys been out like late at night and, and yeah we had we saw everything yeah and you watch drunk drunk guys and so funny what yeah what's <laughs> what's funny drunk people drunk I, people. I don't drink so like obviously i mean me watching other people drink and get too drunk is is comedical but i, I what i witness a lot of really disparaging behavior toward women oh yeah by men, by drunk men in oh, particular. Oh, of course. What, Penn State. Yeah. Okay. What do you see? Like, what time? I you? mean, like, you see a lot of guys who are like really drunk, want to get, you know, with a girl, trying to sleep with her and stuff. And you know, if she says no, you know, you know, 
what comes after that, kind of. And then he, like, starts yelling at her. Yeah, and, like, he'll be like, oh, like, you know, like, the typical, you know, frat dudes that, you know, get too drunk and... Okay, okay. So, you, how is that for you guys? As got, you don't drink either, I assume. How is that for you guys when you see that? I mean, like, it's kind of nasty, you know, to be honest. Like, I come from a very, like, women household, you know. Like, women-centered? Yeah, women-centered household. Um, like moms, aunts, sisters, and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, if something like that would have happened to, like, my family member, you know, it'd be, it wouldn't be pretty good. Well, that's it, but it wouldn't happen by other Muslims, right? Like, in I mean, way. it depends. You know, there's, there's people who claim that they're Muslims and then do the complete opposite of what they're supposed to do. Got you. Got you know, you. There's, there's Muslim men out there that, you know, commit heinous crimes and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. For so, sure, yeah, for sure, for sure. But, like, in, in, back, in back at home, this idea of, Catcalling women and stuff. How often do you see that? How often do you see that? No, no, it's not, it's not shown. You don't there see. There's nothing it? like that. No. I've never. I've not seen that. I mean, I've been in the Emirates many times. I've not seen. We that. have very strict laws. We can be in jail for many years, get fined. So nothing like that. So the idea of when you say avert your gaze. So when you're walking down the street. Remember when I said I'm walking down the street and I'm seeing all, all these like Western women, women of Penn State, and I'm just like this, you know, because I, because me, I, I just like, first off, I, I just don't, I, it's not my thing. First off, I don't really care. You could be, big, people can be naked. I don't really care. It doesn't matter. But, um, and I think people should, should be allowed to be naked, whatever, man, it doesn't matter. But I'm also really just careful. Like I have a, a certain, so how do you, how do you avert your gate? Do, do you ever catch yourself looking, bro? I'm a man, so yeah, of course. <laughs> so, but I try you, to. What do you, is that to look my gaze? What's the word? Avert gaze. my gaze. Avert yeah. my gaze. Yeah. Same with you, bro. I mean, yeah, obviously, there's good-looking girls here. I mean, maybe look a couple times, then you look away. That's really it. Yeah. Well, there is the gaze piece, right? That is like, that's the other side of. I think when you know, like the, the socialization that we have of just like this, this never ending ongoing male gaze that if you're a woman in this society, in any society, but in this society, you just deal with it. Like you just find a way to deal with it and you don't even know it necessarily. And in, and in Islam, you have the, the, you have this book that essentially is telling you, Hey men, we know you're like this. So like, don't do it, you know, which is kind of, interesting um okay let me i'm going to move on a on a on a different on a slightly different thing here so okay let's let's go um so they, do you know do you know who this is no i mean i might have heard of him but i don't really this know this was the shah of iran and his wife okay muhammad Reza Pahlavi, and his his wife actually his wife's nephew was a student of mine many years ago uh so this guy came into power through a coup. De I'm just going to tell you this really fast because I think it matters. When you, when you watch history, because there's something going on right now in Iran that I, I want to talk about given yesterday's class. Um, when you pay attention to history, it's a really good idea to have an understanding of how your own culture and your own society is implicated in things that are happening around the world. And so when we think about Iran and how Iran is today, well, how Iran is today is very much connected to the actions of the United States. So we participated in a coup d'etat and that brought the Shah, gave him full power over the country. And, uh, and we overthrew a democratically elected uh, uh, president, uh, Mossadegh, who we overthrew him because Mossadegh wanted to nationalize all of the oil in Iran and the British and the Americans didn't like that because their oil is actually our oil, which is why we invaded Iraq also. And so we overthrew them. And then uh, the Ayatollah Khomeini came into power and Iran became uh, a very strict Islamic state. Okay? So now we're dealing with, if you know anything about foreign policy, we deal with Iran today because of this, right? Okay? But it's really largely the United States. Okay, so um, next slide. So this young woman here is. Does any? How many of you know who she is, or you're paying attention? Okay. So this young woman here was picked up um, by the uh, by the um, the 
the, the, sin, the sin guards, right, I call them, right? The, 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 the watchful, uh, the Iranians who are just watching out for people who are committing sins on the street, and mostly women. And Masa Amini, so she was picked up several days ago. They took her in because the way she was wearing her hijab, and they beat her, and she died in custody. And it's one of these explosive moments where the country of Iran, people in Iran are like blowing the F up, right? And are on the streets. So I want to show you some photos. Um, go ahead. So these, this is a shop. This is, uh, I think this is in Tehran. And, and people are re they're really going after the police. Keep go through them. Um, here they are confronting the, 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 the guards. I mean, th this is an explosive movement. And next one. Um, and so here, th I thought this was kind of cool. Did you know that letting your hair blow in the wind is a crime in Iran? So here are these women who are taking off their hijabs. And like, you've got to wear a hijab as a woman in Iran. I mean, you don't have to, but on the streets, I mean, you run the risk of getting taken into custody, getting in trouble. So here's another couple more. Um, these are some, d by the way, d these are some badass women right now that are going out into the streets y'all right this this is really serious and next one um women cutting their hair burning the woman on the left is burning hijabs lots and lots of women are just taking them off and burning them in the streets um and i and i and i go ahead next one um here's the the woman on the left is part of this um the sin police i call them um, and so is the guy on the right, just really kind of stopping people on the street and keeping them in line, and they stop this woman. And so the statement that's common is, you know, women wear a veil or eat my hand, right, meaning it's slapped. So look at the woman on the left. She wants the woman on the right to dress like her, okay? So you understand. We have, this is what it, we talked about yesterday, right? You see all these differences in perspectives, and so just like differences in perspectives among Christians, Buddhists, Hindus, Jews, you have differences in Muslims. So next one. Um, but these are also women in Iran. And so go, go back one. So that woman on the left doesn't want the woman on the right to be like these women. Go, go forward. Those are Muslim women in Iran, right? And that's what happens if the sin police aren't really going to be in control then this thing's going to open up here look at this next one right that's not what you think about when you think about iranian women right you don't think about that right these women and next one here's like three young iranians doing their thing that drink is probably a non-alcoholic drink although plenty of people drink alcohol smoke hookah and smoke hashish in iran man I know many of them. <laughs> they, they smoke hashish everywhere, don't they? All right. So what do, you, what, do you think, what do you think about this movement in Iran? What do you guys think about it right now? But just this uproar to say, you will not tell us, the government. We can decide, right? I can, it's between me and Allah to decide if I'm going to wear hijab, if I'm going to be hijabi. But yo, you all don't, don't tell us that. And what do you what do you think about this? I mean, in the Quran, it says that like like it's between like you said like it's between the woman and God Himself. I mean, it's not anybody else's place to you know you know they say not to judge another Muslim or judge anyone at, at like worry about yourself before you worry about others. And uh, like me personally, I don't agree with like the Iranian government saying you know oh my God like you have to force them force them. Nothing by force is gonna you know work and. Um, and that's also like haram in the Quran to force somebody to, to do, do some to do anything. So if we go back one, so these women here, they dress like that, like that's okay because that's they haven't gotten there yet. Like they haven't had their conversation with Allah to say like, hey man, Allah, eh, guide me on this. Like they haven't gotten there, so that's cool for you guys. Like it's cool. I mean, I I don't care. Like I, a girl can wear whatever she wants. Like I don't, especially hijab. Like I come from a family. Like my yeah, my yeah. parents are like very religious, but yep. like not to like where they wear hijabs or anything like that. Okay. But um, like I said before, like it's between the woman and God Himself. Okay. Okay. And yeah. Okay, bro. How about you, man? 
I believe at least they're wearing they're wearing uh, modest clothes. So they're wearing what? Modest clothes. Yeah, modest clothes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's modest. I mean, it shows you that, like, m- wait, what's modest mean? Like, what's that mean for you? Not shorts or uh, uh-huh. crop top or whatever. Yeah, you got a lot of that one woman's leg. I mean, it's kind of going up her her lower leg a little bit, but that but that's okay. To her and God, yeah, not right. me. Yeah, okay, okay, cool. So for you, like that's fine. Like it doesn't really matter. But for for here, it's fine. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, okay, I got you. All right, next, and, and then the next slide. Same thing, like these these folks, because you're not, you're never going to tell these people what to do. The Iranian government is never going to win this battle. Like you, you, you will never win, right? The mo- look, look at. Go, Go, look at, hey, no, do the, the three people. Look at those three people. You are not going to tell them what to do. That ain't happening. So the, the Iranian government, just like the U.S. government, just like any government, you can make demands on people, but that's not going to happen. And that's why people are out in the street protesting. And that's why Iran, not looking backwards, Iran will not be a, a theocratic state forever because you won't. Theocracy is like, it's not going to win. What's winning, what's going to win, what's going to pull through is a, is a more secular, modern way of seeing the world. Just like in the Emirates. The Emirates in Saudi, where it is Saudi Arabia, it doesn't matter. It's all going to modernize very slowly because that's the nature of it. Like it has to, because that's where the world is going. Like it's not, it's not going this way, it's just going this way. And I'm saying that as a sociologist, it doesn't really matter. Like just like religions adapt. Like, you know, like in Saudi, bro, what do you think about this? The, like, you know, you ever see, um, hang on a second. Can you, can, can, hang on, I, I don't have time to go. Okay, never mind. I can't do it. So, uh, what do you think about that, dude? What I just said? What part? About, like, it will not be theocratic in the future. Like, it, this, is, this is the future right here. Right there, man. I mean, the, it's, it's what's happening, so I agree with you. It's the future. Dubai the is, uh, yeah, too. Dubai is like that. In Abu Dhabi, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But there are some families that are still cons- convers- conservative. No, 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 there yeah, are. Yeah, there are. No, 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 they are. They're just every, every decade, it's fewer and fewer. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, man, you are not going to, those women right there, you aren't, you're not, that's, that's it, man. That's what it is. And so what's interesting for you all is when you're thinking about a lot of cultures like this, you got to understand you're, you, you got, you have to look deeper to see what's actually going on because this is the same, dude, I I mean, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, it's the same, all these people, they're in, they're everywhere, right? It's all the same. Any final thoughts, bro? No, not really. All right. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks, bro. Thanks, man. All right. <laughs> All right. So here. Thanks. Thanks, y'all. Um, Dela. So um, you and I are going to have a conversation. So t- say something about yourself. Where are you from? Hi, I'm Dela. I'm from Montgomery County, uh, outside of Philadelphia. And you, wait, what are you studying here? Psychology. Psychology? Yeah. Okay, so when we first talked, like, what, what is it that you're, I mean, what are you really passionate about? Um, I'm very passionate about sexology and sex psychology. Mm-hmm. Um, the understanding and having better sex education overall is super important to me and I think a lot of the issues that we were talking about previously like uh, what was stated about frat boys being an issue would not be if uh, we had better sex education mm-hmm you meaning that by the way hey that's not to disparage frat boys okay frat guys we'll say frat guys he did say frat boys that's right. I, I know I got you. I got you. All right. So, and it would be it wouldn't happen because why? Um, I think it's not that it wouldn't happen. Unfortunately, it's more that 
it, more people would be educated on what is safe and consensual sex and then they can recognize whether or not they want to partake, like having a drop of alcohol in your system makes it so you technically cannot consent. But for a lot of people, they can't go talk to a potential partner without having some liquid courage. Yeah, yeah. yeah so got, things yeah. like that would be informed ahead of time, and there wouldn't be any gray area of who was and wasn't consenting. And like in like what in the kinds of things that we would talk about, right? Yeah. Cuz we don't talk about any of this stuff. No, not really. So, how okay, so I want to go back to the 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 yesterday's conversation. What what struck you about about that conversation? Um I was on the camera so I didn't hear all of it, but I thought it was really interesting um because and even today's conversation because if it's just kind of what each person wants to do. Like, uh, all the ladies up here that were wearing hijabs, if they want to wear that, that's completely them. And, like, while it definitely is a social construct and, like, uh, expectation um, with being Muslim, it's if they choose to wear it, they are doing it for themselves in a sense. Uh-huh. So do you, as someone who is really thinking about these issues a lot, um, how do you, how do you think, hang on, can you, can you put that one, that last slide up? How do you think about this, right? Remember, did you see this slide the other day? It's so, so we're, this idea of policing women's bodies, like men are, ple we, do, did women come up with this stuff? I don't believe so, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I highly doubt it, right? So we have men that for whatever reason, we're policing your bodies. Right because of something in us mm -hmm. and so how is that for you like what do you have any commentary on that i have a lot of commentary on that um i don't agree with it i think if someone cannot handle their own urges or if they are not regulated or taught to act a certain way that they should then expect someone else to compensate for them mm. that's not my responsibility mm -hmm. because i wear what i want and i'm comfortable you're upset not my problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like this idea of, I, I just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this idea of the underside curve, the underside curve, like that's, okay, whatever. Like, yeah, everybody has a different body and everybody's okay. So for you to say because someone has a bigger butt or a bigger bust, that they're or, or we don't want to see any of it yeah, at all. Yeah, that that's in that they're inappropriate. Like I've had personal experiences where people try to police my body, especially when I was in middle school and like growing up. And it's like I am changing. I did not change on purpose. I did not ask for the changes that I got. I simply am living with them and trying to like find something that fits my body now and makes me comfortable as far as clothing. Mm -hmm. So for someone else to come and say that I'm being promiscuous or inappropriate is ridiculous, especially an adult who has been through that experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what, and what is, like what, right, because what is appropriate, right? right? Is there, do you have any ideas of what's appropriate? I think, I mean, that's kind of the gray space, right? Like being appropriate, for right now, like, I'm not wearing a bra, and many people would think that's super inappropriate, um, but it's what makes me comfortable, and I think it's hard to say because you could say, well, if it's not hurting anybody, but to some people who are more conservative or feel that they have a right to police my body or anybody else's, I'm sure they would say, like, oh, it's hurting me in, in some form because perhaps it's unholy or unconservative and therefore like tempting them well so but right but if you're at a place like let's just talk about Penn State for a second okay. uh, you know this is like the bastion of secular hedonism here right so mm -hmm. like then you wouldn't be at Penn State like don't come here go to some like really conservative place right right or just don't go don't be around women or don't be around so i always, i often have this idea about breastfeeding for example mm -hmm. that like breasts are made for b 
basically kind of one thing. They're not made for the male gaze. They're not sexual inherently. <laughs> They're meant to feed children. So any when I whenever I'm anywhere and a woman is breastfeeding, I'm just like, awesome, man. Like, yeah, I, I mean, agree. <laughs> and then whenever I see anybody have a problem with that, I just like I don't possibly understand. And my mom was kind of a badass, and and I was her last child, yeah. and she just breast. I mean, the story is she was just anywhere with me. She didn't care. She didn't care what people what people thought and she definitely didn't care what men thought and so I mean the thought that you're gonna keep someone from feeding their offspring or their child (laughs) is really weird or no I'm gonna say hey listen what you need to do is um oh you need to breastfeed well we have a room over here for you yeah a little uh, dungeon (laughs) yeah you can you can go in there and you can breastfeed and then when you're done come out you know that's odd it's very odd isn't Mm -hmm. it like the one thing yet and yet Yet it's perfectly fine for me to give you, you know, give you, uh, you know, a, a milkshake or a, yeah. or a, a ca- canister of milk that comes from a cow that's produced for baby cows. Like, we're the only mammal that drinks the milk of another mammal. But that's perfectly normal. You can drink this, but your baby can't breastfeed in any place other than a, a darkened room somewhere out of sight of everybody else. Isn't it? It's kind of bizarre, right? That you drink milk from a... Absolutely. Could you ever imagine yourself, like, getting down on a cow like this with the udder and, like... (laughs) Which I have done that, by the (laughs) way. Or how about drinking the milk... But, like, somehow it's okay to drink the milk of a cow, but how about drink the milk of a dog? You know? It's harder to get the milk of a dog, but... Yeah. (laughs) So, um, what do you, what, like, you, you, you sound like you're really, how about, let me ask you this, you know, you, you sound really reasonable, like, there's nothing you've said that I can imagine anybody would be bothered with, right, it's like, okay, um, what do you, what do you think that people struggle with the most? on the, the kinds of stuff that we're talking about? In regards to their beliefs, you mean? Yeah, like, what's, what's so hard about this, diff, this conversation? Because it should be really, because I'm with you, that if we, if we educated people, you know, you, you watched the, the, the lecture that Lori and I did, right? If we educated people, people would just be so just much more at ease. Like, what's the struggle? Um, I think it's habit for the most part. Um, A lot of people, you know, you grow up in your house and you're taught a certain way. And to go away from that is really hard, Um, especially when it seems like the majority agrees with that way, which Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at this point in time it does. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think also, especially when it comes to sex education, People are very nervous. When, whenever I talk to people about it and like saying like, oh, like we need to start younger, we need to talk to people and really get them before puberty so that when these changes occur, because it's not just about actually having sex, it's also about what your body goes through, just recognizing your genitalia. It can start, there's sex across the lifespan and there's actually a class on that, it's really cool. Um, people fear for the children, that's like, what everybody says is like, oh, you can't be telling little kids. I don't want my son coming home and telling me about anal sex or a clit, like. Or just sex. Yeah, sex in general. It's, it's so uncomfortable. And I, I have to ask them, like, if you had sex education and it was thorough and it talked about everything from being queer, non-binary, trans, like, if kind of you said it in your lecture, um, that, like, education that we have now is like a pair of pants, and it doesn't really fit everyone. Yeah. But if we made that pair of pants into a skirt, and it fit everyone, Uh even people who didn't have legs, Mm -hmm. you know, would they be so uncomfortable to answer those questions that their kids ask them, or just start younger and you know have have a more open mindset 
It, the answer is we would. Things mm -hmm. would be completely different. But this is part of one of the reasons I teach this class is to have these kinds, the, the conversations that kind of force us out into our discomfort zone. Um, and, and if we get to the discomfort zone, then we can start to think for ourselves, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, right now, especially our system, it's kind of taught in a way to test or to educate for the next test as opposed to to educate for mastering something yeah and when you master something it means you understand it from every angle and that you're able to then if something goes wrong that you didn't expect make up for that yeah and so to have like a masterful sex education you would learn about every way that you can have sex and like just a fun fact for everyone to know, the safest form of sex is masturbation. And a lot of people don't know that because it's not considered sex because it's not with two people. And it's like, it's so safe because there's no chance of an STD or an STI, and if you're cleaning and proper, you know. And there's no chance of abuse. But nobody knows that because it's sinful or inappropriate or whatever term you want to say. So it's like, if you knew about that, you wouldn't be worried that your penis is gonna fall off because you wanna wank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say it like that, but that's <laughs> Sorry. all right. No, 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 that's all right. No, and I think, so for you, what I think about are a lot of cultures and a lot of places where people don't have, people don't have an opportunity until they s come together and they have to figure it out for themselves, which yeah. is really pretty, yeah, kind of. If you don't get the unsettling. blueprint, how are you supposed to do it, right? Yeah, how are you supposed to do it? Well, that's what this, that's what this is all about, right? And so next, next, next week we go in a very different direction and we talk about some other things. And it, but this is all good. Hey, um, could you imagine wearing a hijab, by the way? Could you like... I want to try one. I think they look beautiful. And especially when people like do it to frame their face. Yeah. I love it. I, th I see so many... I, Hijabis? Is yeah, hijabis. Hijabis. Hey, some and some hijabi in here. Bring bring a hijab someday, so uh, I would definitely. So Dela can you, when you're on the camera, you can have a hijab on and just see what it's like yeah. to to. Be I don't there. know how I'd fit my hair, but I will try. No, no, no they'll do, you. You can hook her up, right? She's got you. That'd She's gonna awesome. hook you up. Next <laughs> class. All right, man. Hey, thanks. thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, awesome, man. God, it's so... Um, by the way, uh, maybe... Okay, we have 15 minutes. Here's what we're going to do. Um, make sure you put, put your stuff... Put your, desk, put your desk down. Like, put all the, the desks down, because you're going to... We're going to... Okay, we good? All right, ma'am. Dela, maybe for one of the Social Run 18 classic lectures, we'll do the Nini Penis one. That, that should be one of them. And then you all can watch that lecture. Okay. Hey, um, so here's what I want to do. I just want to kind of get a sense of who's in the class right now. And so I'm, I just want to read off different things. And, and I want you to stand up if this, and you can stand up. You don't have to stand. If there are a couple of them and you just feel like you don't want to stand, that's fine. But otherwise, um, if they apply to you, uh, s you stand up, okay? Are we ready? All right, man. Um, and you can maybe put on the screen the, the camera above the door, a couple of cameras. So it's not, we, so niche, we don't want to have me on the screen on this, okay? Uh, that one isn't? All right, man. Maybe one, maybe one, of, maybe yellow. All right, listen. Uh, hey, stand up if you have an adopted nuclear family member. Someone in your nuclear family who's adopted. Including yourself, by the way. Adopted? Your nuclear family is your household, and adopted meaning adopted from another family. Yeah? Okay. Yo, cool. All right. That's, that's a lot of... Okay, cool. Thanks, man. Yeah. Um, how about uh, stand up if you've had your heart broken and it still hurts?
<laughs> Dude. You dog? All right, Ma. All right, Ma. All right, cool. Thanks, y'all. Um, hey, st stand up if you don't drink. You don't drink alcohol. So this, is that, it's, this should be like all the Muslims and then a few other people. Yo, that's, a lot, that's actually a lot of people. So, hey, I want you to think about this. Just as you look around, look around, bro. Like when you, when you think about like Penn State's a big party school, a big drinking school, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there are a lot of people here who don't drink. Um, okay, thanks, man. Um, hey, stand up if you were bullied at some point growing up, man. Oh, shit. Damn, seriously. Whoa, seriously? Whoa. All right. All right, man. Yo, that's a lot. That's a lot of people. Um, all right, man. S uh, stand, up, stand up if you were a bully at some point. <laughs> Okay, now that sucks, man. Dude, you stood up twice, man. You can't. All right, have a seat. Um, hey, stand if you've had a parent who has died in your lifetime. A parent, one of your parents. And uh, hey, and stay standing if your parent has died just in the past year. Anybody? Whoa, one, two, three. Hey, a virtual hug to you all, all right? Yeah, cool. Yeah, thanks, man. Well, I can g come down after class. I'll give you a real hug, right? And he'll give you a hug, too. Um, say, stand up if you have at least one parent who's lesbian, gay, bisexual, or trans, who's in the queer community. If you have at least one parent who is queer. Serious? Nobody? Okay, hang on. Stand up if you think you have, you have a parent who you think is <laughs> queer. But they're not out. So you, you think? Your mom or your dad? Yeah? Yeah? So it's your mom, but what about your mom's girlfriend? Is she queer too? <laughs> no. All right, so you think your mom. All right, cool. Have you talked to her about it? Oh, I got you. So your mom, all right. So, <laughs> so your mom's like walking into those waters, but like, okay, cool, man. Maybe by the time you graduate, she'll. Um, <laughs> hey, how, stand up if you are um, have turned away from the religion of your parents. Yeah, that's, yo, man, yeah, that's. That's a lot of people. Well, that's a lot of you all. Damn. All right. Um, thanks, man. Here's one. Um, th this is a good one, actually. Stand up if you currently have two or more jobs or you work a full-time job to put yourself through school. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's cool. Thanks, man. You know, it's awesome that you all clapped. That's that's cool. Um, stand up if you feel like you really just don't belong at Penn State. Like you just don't belong here. Yeah. <laughs> you, bro? Come on. All right. Yeah, it's a lot. Of, okay, a lot of folks. All right, y'all. Hey, but y'all, you, 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 you do belong. You're part, you know, you're part of my family now, so it's all good. But stand up if you're in a major that you really don't like. 
Dude, he, he Dude, I just want to point out that the guy on crutches was the very first one to stand up really fast. <laughs> All right, thanks, man. Hey, um, how about this? Stand up if you have one at least one parent who's unemployed and it's really a problem in your family. Anybody? One family who's one parent who's unemployed and it's a problem in your family so just three people okay all right holding that for you um hey um stand up if you have personally spoken with gary the willard preacher <laughs> all right cool man yeah very cool all right I have too, so. Um, all right, man. And uh, you know, stand up if you are, if you identify as multi or biracial or multi or bicultural in a cultural in a really serious way that it's essentially racial. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's a it's a lot of people. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, thanks, man. It's really in, you can see it, right? All right, hey, uh, I got, here's a good one. Stand up if you own at least one gun. Wait, any, are there any, wait, are there any women here? Okay, one woman, some women, okay. All right, man. Um, all right, man. How about, all right, thanks, y'all. Yo, you got my back in here, right? If, I, if we need it. Yeah, if I need protection. Um, hey, um, stand up if you regularly post on TikTok or another social media platform and you have a lot of followers. Yeah, our guy here. I know, he's not here today. Hang on, I'll be him, man. All right, hang on. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. <laughs> All right, you guys? How many? 23,000? All right, man. Dude, awesome. And TikTok? No, Instagram. Instagram? All right, man. All right, man. How about uh, stand up if you have a sibling with a mental or physical disability? Hey, by the way, I just everybody who's standing, just really look around and see how many people are standing. Like this is it's this is one of these things where we feel we sometimes feel really isolated, and and it's important that you see that you're really part of a big invisible tribe of people. So, thanks for that. Um, hey, stand up if you are estranged estranged from meaning like you have no contact with at least one of your parents. And, and stay standing if you have no contact with both of your parents, biological parents, or adopted. Anybody? One, one person? Biological or? Ad Biological. Yeah? Okay. That's intense. Sending you energy as an adult, sending energy to you. That's not easy. Um, hey, uh, stand if you've touched a dead body that was not embalmed. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, man. Um, hey, uh, stand up if you've ever been in handcuffs, not not in the bedroom, <laughs> right? No, like, yo, yo, hang on. So, dude, seriously, for what? Speeding? You got in a hand. You must have been going really fast. Wait, and stay stand. Wait, stay. Have stay standing. Have you? If you've been inside of a a jail, a jail cell or prison cell, who's been inside of a jail or prison cell? You two guys. One. Yeah. Dude, you bro, you seem like such a nice guy. All right, thanks, man. Um. Yo, here's one. Um, stand, stand if you're a hugger, like you just like to hug people. Uh, 
dude. Seriously? Dude, give me a hug, man. All right. Yeah, it's a lot of huggers, man. All right. I, I expect some hugs next class, all right? Hey, um, stand if you have... If you have a chronic health condition that, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of folks. And hey, um, and stay, you don't, you don't have to stay standing, but uh, st stay standing if you have, if your chronic health condition is going to, you think, you, you imagine it to significantly, sh uh, to shorten your life, you know. Anybody? Okay. Um, hey, and stand if someone who's very close to you, could be a friend, sibling, parent, grandparent, who suffers from pretty serious depression. Yeah. Damn, man. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot of folks, y'all. A lot of energy going toward you. Um, okay. Uh, stand up if s you're close to somebody who, is ha who either has had or you are pretty certain has had an abortion. Yeah. Man. That's intense. Okay. Um, st st uh, stand up if you've spent it two or more consecutive weeks in a hospital. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. All right, we have two. We have. T okay, thanks, y'all. All right, we have two more. Um, Stand if you consider yourself to already be a, a traveler and that you've been to at least 10 or, 10 or 15 different countries. Yeah. All right, man. All right, okay, now, now we have two more. We have one minute left, so we got two more. Ready? Uh, stand up if you've Never been to a Penn State football game. <laughs> Yo, a lot of international students, man. All right. Hey, I just want to say to all of you, I, I don't go. To, I am going to the game, actually, uh, this weekend. I'm actually the, a guest coach, so I'll be down on the field. But I will say to most of you, especially international students, go to at least one game before you leave here because it's, it's a really interesting experience. I don't go to many games myself. Hey, all right, final thing, man. Uh, stand up if you've never smoked marijuana. All right, all right, hang on. You ready? Damn, that's a lot of people. All right, and remain, yo, and, re and remain standing if you really want to try. All uh, right. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, everybody. Yo. All right, man. Be safe this weekend. We'll see you on uh, Tuesday.